This video covers dynamic data and update data function. The structure of this video is as follows. Dynamic data, update data function, and the summary. All right, let's get started. Dynamic data. Thus far, we have been looking at and using static data. The data set on the screen is an array of JSON objects where each object represents a city and its respective attributes. This is useful if you are feeding in data from the server once or if you are using static data. As we saw in the last two videos, we can use the D3 general update pattern to update data bound to DOM elements. We can do it either by index as the default or by using a key function. Though there are myriad ways to get and send changing data from the server, we will start slowly. For now, we will focus on using JavaScript to generate changing data. We will use the JavaScript date object to generate data. This is pretty simple to use and you should be very familiar with how hours, minutes, seconds, and days work. The JavaScript date object has many methods for getting specific information. Here the list shows that we can get the day, the hour, the minute, and the second the date object was created. For this video we will focus on the minutes and seconds. This is because these change fast enough for us to view it as dynamic data. We write the following function named update data. This function, when called, creates a new JavaScript date object and assigns it to the current time variable. The function then returns an array of JavaScript object literals. As the keys have quotes around them making them strings, we can refer to them as JSON objects. Each JSON object has a key of time unit and time data. The first JSON object has a time unit of minute and will get the current time's minutes. The second JSON object has a time unit of second and will get the current time's seconds. We can use the JavaScript window set interval method to have the function run every 1000 milliseconds. Every one second this code will call the update data function which will then return the array of JSON objects. We write the returned value to the JavaScript console using the console.log functionality. Before we show the JavaScript example, a quick tip on working with set interval in JavaScript. When you execute the set interval command, it will return an ID number. This is the internally assigned ID for this set interval process. To stop a particular set interval process, you have to use the clear interval command with the ID of the process you want to stop. We'll show this in the JavaScript example. This web page has the D3 library imported from the d3js.org website. We have opened the Chrome Developer Tools and are in the console section. Before we write the function, let's explore the JavaScript date object. When we define the variable, we get the current date and time. If we use the getMinutes method, we get the minutes of the date and time from the current time variable. If we use the getSeconds method, we get the seconds of the date and time from the current time variable. It is important to remember that the current time date object was created once, so if we run the getSeconds method again, it will continue to show the same number. We can see that it is the same number. All right, let's now build out the function. Let's run the function and assign it to a variable named data. Let's see what it returned. We can see that we have an array of two JavaScript objects. Each has a key of time data and a key of time unit. If we run slash assign the variable again, we should get something different. You can see that we have a different minute number and a different second number. Next, to make it dynamic, let's use the setInterval command to update the data once every second. First, notice the process ID of 1. Next, notice that an array of objects keeps appearing in the JavaScript console every 1 second. When we click into two consecutive arrays, you can see that the numbers are being updated properly. So we now have dynamic data being generated. Let's stop this data using the clear interval command so we can move on to the next section. Note that no more arrays of objects are being written to the console. Now that we have a way of generating dynamic data using JavaScript, let's next explore how we deal with this dynamic data when updating a bar chart using D3. Update data function. When we do a data join on a selection that already contains existing elements, we have three scenarios. 
In scenario 1, we have an equal number of existing elements and data elements to be bound. In scenario 2, we have more existing elements than we have data elements to be bound. In scenario 3, we have less existing elements than we have data elements to be bound. In this video, we will always have an equal number of existing elements and data elements to be bound. So we will be in scenario 1. The D3 update pattern is as follows. First, do a data join with the new data. Second, update the old elements as needed. Third, create new elements as needed. Fourth, if the third step appended elements to the enter selection, the update selection expands to include the enter selection so you can operate on enter and update selections at the same time. Fifth and final step, remove old elements as needed. Because we have the same number of existing elements as data elements to be bound, we won't have to deal with the enter and exit selections. So we will focus on the data join and updating attributes of elements based on the new data. We are going to build a simple bar chart clock. It will ignore the day and hour and only display the minutes and seconds. This is a basic bar chart with X and Y axis, X and Y scales, and SVG rectangles. The data will be generated by the update function to return minutes and seconds from a JavaScript date object. A data join will be performed and the updated data bound to the SVG rectangle elements will be used to redraw the rectangles. The way we do this is with a JavaScript function called redraw. Within this function we will do a recomputing of the data. Then once we have the new data we will do a data join using a key function. Lastly, we update the SVG element attributes based on the newly bound data. The recomputing of the data is the easy part. This is done by calling the update data function. The array of JSON objects returned is the newly created data we will use for the data join. The data join is done using a key function to make sure that the minute bar gets the minute data and that the second bar gets the second data. Because we are doing a data join where the number of existing elements and data elements to be bound are the same, we don't have to worry about the enter and exit selections. As we are just updating the attributes of the elements that are already there, we can use the same functionality that we use to create the bar chart in the first place. We update the X and Y values to be the time unit and time data as scaled through the respective scaling functions. The width is still the x-axis ordinal scale range band. The height is the height minus the y scaled function of the time data to ensure the rectangle starts from the zero point as shown on the chart. To make it more fun and to show what we can do, we will have the redraw function use a D3 transition over the one second. This transformation will make the rectangle movement more smooth. It will also make the fill of the rectangles alternate between green and steel blue depending on whether the minute or second is even or odd. After we define this, we will then use the set interval command to have new data generated, do a data join, and update the SVG rectangle attributes once a second. In doing this, we will show a very basic example of how we can use D3 with dynamic data and an update data function. This web page has the D3 library imported from the d3js.org website. We have opened the Chrome Developer Tools and are in the console section. First, we define the update data function that will create a new date object and provide us with an array of JSON objects detailing the minute and second it was run. To construct the bar chart, we start with the definition of the SVG container the bar chart will live in. Then we define the D3 margin convention parameters. Using the D3 margin convention and SVG viewport, we define the inner drawing space. Next, we define the ordinal x scaling function to help scale the x axis of the bar chart. Note that the domain is comprised of the string minute and the string second. Then we define the linear y scaling function to help scale the minutes and seconds. Note that since minutes and seconds both go to 60, we can show them both in the same chart with the same scale. Also, as always, remember that the SVG coordinate space is inverted across the y-axis, so we need the range to go from height to zero. Now that we have the x scaling function, we create the x-axis and give it an orientation. We also create the y-axis and give it an orientation. 
we then call the x-axis function to place it inside of the inner drawing space. Note that we have to transform translate the SVG group element to make sure the x-axis is at the bottom of the chart. We also call the y-axis function to place it inside of the inner drawing space. And with that, we have our coordinate system to draw our data in. Now we run the update data function to generate the data for the first time. Let's look to see what data was generated. We can see the time data for both the minutes and seconds. Next, let's use the D3 pattern to generate the SVG rectangles. We do the normal select all non-existing elements, do a data join, choose the enter selection, append SVG rectangles, and then define their attributes and styles. And there we go. We have our bar chart clock showing us the minutes and seconds. Next, we do a manual updating of the data. First, we calculate a new data set. We can see that this is a new data set with new time data for both the minute object and the second object. Next, we do a data join and attribute update, remembering that we just use the update selection as we have the same number of elements as new data points to be joined. It worked. We saw both the minute bar and the second bar jump up with the new data. The key function in the data join worked correctly and the chart worked. Let's now code up the full update data function. In the redraw function, remember that we are adding in a transition so that the bars move smoothly and change color according to whether the number they represent is odd or even. Note that nothing happens. This is because we have just defined the function. We will have to run it in order for it to take effect. We run it once. We wait a few seconds and then run it again. We can see how it is transitioning bar size for both the minute and second bars as well as changing color. Finally, let's use the set interval command to automate the redrawing so that it functions like a clock. You can see the second bar slowly and smoothly moving upwards as the seconds tick by. And with that, we have covered the basics of thinking about and generating basic dynamic data in JavaScript. We have also shown how we can construct an update data function that generates new data, does a data join with a key function, and then uses part of the D3 general update pattern to construct a dynamic data visualization. The summary. This video covered dynamic data, update data function, and the summary.